It's our pleasure today to welcome Bob Mickle, a curriculum coordinator with the university's OLLI program, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute. And uh, really need to hear all of the things that OLLI is doing um, in partnership with our Lincoln community to keep seniors engaged, to um, enhance our lifestyles, and every day for us to have a variety of different reasons to be excited and to have things to look forward to. So um, Bob, thanks so much for joining us today. I know you've really had to pivot and make a lot of um, adaptations for your team, your uh, volunteer instructors, and uh, many of your students. They've been a big learning curve and I am, I'm just so proud to uh, be an instructor and be part of your program and to be able to promote that. Tell us a little bit about what these last couple of weeks have been like. Well, thanks for having me, Carla. Um, well, it's, it's, it's been more than just the last couple of weeks. It's been about two months now since uh, things kind of went sideways on, on uh, everything that's going on. And uh, my job description basically was 180 degree turnaround in that time as well. Uh, at the time that the uh, coronavirus uh, became a big issue, uh, we were just registering people for our term four, which is our spring term. We had over 2,300 enrollments that we had to turn around and cancel. In a matter of about six to seven days, I was able to work with some OLLI instructors uh, and uh, other OLLI program coordinators from across the country and put together a a spring program that consisted of uh, three Zoom classes and then a uh, compilation of about 30 hours of recorded programming from OLLI instructors and from other OLLIs across the state. Since then, it's just been absolute crazy because we've built a whole new summer programming uh, and we're also uh, looking forward and trying to figure out what will be the best way to provide those offerings that are so important to our seniors uh, into the fall. So talk a little bit about a few of those classes and um, just some maybe that excite you and that you think are either new to the program or that are fan favorites um, that have maybe had some creativity put into them so that they can continue to happen. Well, I, I think, uh, you know, um, I, I should share that uh, our, our summer programming, uh, when the university shut down and said everything was going to be uh, recorded, uh, non-face-to-face, -face, uh, the chancellor did give us the okay to go ahead and schedule some live programming for uh, mid-July and after with the understanding that if, or with the idea that this was going to get better and we could get some people at least out there uh, uh, together in some way, shape, or form, but uh, with the caveat that if it doesn't, then those could also be canceled. So uh, one of the fun ones that I think is, is exciting is uh, we're going to uh, try to put together a tour out to the James Arthur uh, vineyards and the wine tasting obviously they've taken steps and so we'll take steps to make sure that everybody's safe in that regard and then ed zimmer is going to give us a uh, tour in history of the Wayuka cemetery and so those are a couple of the live courses that i think are going to be exciting i do think we'll get a lot of people also signing up for a new course that we had planned and we're going to stay with it's called intro to paddle boarding we've done the kayaking we're going to see if people want to try some paddle boarding as well um, we're real fortunate to get about 12 or 13 uh, Zoom classes, uh, live streaming classes put together for this summer. And uh, one of them actually is, is, is going to be one of the first ones up. Randy Moody, who is an OLLI member, uh, is going to do a uh, class called Choosing Our Judiciary. And it's the question is, is it political or is it meritorious? And I think that one's going to be very um, well attended. I think the uh, interest there is, is very, very high. Uh, another one uh, that uh, I believe is going to be really good is something called Aging with Intention. Uh, and Julie Masters is a professor at gerontology here at the University of Nebraska, Lincoln, and she also is in Omaha. And, and I think people can tune in on that one and see some really good information about uh, how to age with intention and, and how to really see and embrace the potential of your own life after 65 or whatever your age happens to be. So uh, I could go on and on, I, but I do think that um, the programming for the summer uh, generally is a little bit more out and about, but we've, we've tried to put together a lot more uh, courses where people can gather together via Zoom and, and learn in that regard. So uh, really a, a 
all things considered, I think a pretty solid summer programming offering. Bob, have you had enough courses already to understand, you know, how well the adaption to the new technology is going to go? Um, you know, for example, just talking to my family members that are in the age demographic of all the attendees, um, there's just that little short learning curve, but then a, a quick embrace of like, this is really neat and this is really helpful. You know, what's that been like so far? Well, Andrew, I, I would tell you this. We have not had enough to, to really allow our membership to embrace it. I think, you know, with, with, uh, with the summer or the spring courses being turned around so quickly, only getting three Zoom people or Zoom classes, it was, it was pretty difficult. Nevertheless, uh, we, we filled two of the three and had the other one very full. So we were in the, I mean, in one class, we had over 50 people. Um, we've also offered a, a couple of free things online uh, which I think are important uh, topics, you know, food pantry during the COVID-19. And then we've got one coming up here on uh, uh, the merits of giving uh, during a time of need. And uh, those are going to be free. And, and, and part of it is because they're important topics. But the other part is to make people uh, or to encourage people to try this. And, uh, you know, we tend to steer away from things we don't know a lot about. And, mm. Uh, we're doing everything we can to promote those types of things uh, to our membership. Um, as I looked at the registration things going on this morning, today is the first day of our summer registration opened up. And I, I just did the math right now where our enrollment for summer is, uh, I can't find it, but I want to say we're, we're pushing 350 already and that's pretty good. And, and so um, I think word of mouth is going to be important and, and things like this where we can share um, how easy Zoom is, um, we can make that grow. And, and, and I, I do believe that one of the important things we need to understand is people need the socialization and Zoom can provide that. Um, we aren't really uh, wanting to socially distance ourselves as the terminology is. Instead, it's, it's important for us, for people to be safe, that we can physically distance them, but we can provide that social interaction through Zoom, whether it be uh, party line coffee chats or whether it be uh, classroom situations where we can break them into smaller groups or get them to ask questions and be involved that way. Or we've even got interest groups where people can get together via Zoom as well. There's often um, positives to the changes that we're doing with all of our adaptations right now. And I, I kind of hope for the, the clients and families that we serve, you know, some of those individuals were able to take to a class um, like Ollie, but some individuals just, it's not possible even with uh, a caregiver with them. And so, you know, a thing that I see is the potential for somebody that isn't hasn't been able to attend Ollie classes in person. This is a new avenue for them to continue to be involved, which could be really great um, as we see continuing shifts with aging populations. You know, all of your great Ollie members now, as they continue to age, how can they um, remain active um, if they're not physically able to? So, a cool opportunity, I think that. Um, they'll be prepared and they would know how to use some of those technologies if those opportunities continue in the future. And you know, Andrew, before this all hit, that was one of the things that was kind of a pet project of mine. I was working on how do we utilize Zoom to reach the um, aging population in this city? And we were focusing on uh, senior living centers. And so we had just probably within two or three weeks before this happened, uh, had a three-week session that we provided to uh, uh, one of the senior living centers in in town, and we were we were live from one of our remote learning sites, and so it's a little different than sitting behind a computer. But we were working out some kinks, and then this all happened. But um, you know, we see this as being possible. We we look at the possibilities of the future of saying, okay, we're going to offer a class, and you have the choice whether you can come to the when we come physically or you want to get it from home. Um, you know, we're not quite there yet because we've had some other things we've been focusing on the obstacle we have is the Osher Foundation put together Ollie, Ollie uh, programs across the country 
um, because he believed strongly in the face-to-face -face social interaction. And this may be a new normal, uh, which may change the mindset to some degree, uh, but we will probably continue in the future, even when this is all said and done, as you said, provide alternatives. We've had some people say, you know what, we love going on Canvas and getting those classes recorded because I can't get out. Uh, and that they say it's the same about Zoom. Uh, in addition, the people who take a Canvas class, you know, they may not get the face-to-face -face interaction, they say, but I can learn when I want at my own pace. Mm -hmm. and so there's pros and cons of all of it. And I think what we're gonna have to do as we move forward is look at a blended approach to see um, who, who functions best in which situation based on their happenstance. I like that term blended approach. And you're right, Bob. I mean, even thinking about um, winter, I mean, exactly. right? Any time of the day, any weather, you know, that you could be in class. And also the other thing that I keep thinking about, which is where um, we tie in so closely is the importance of connection and that connection to one another, to our Lincoln community, to our family, to our friends, and, and the classes and the special interest groups, the party lines, they're all different avenues um, to keep people connected. And um, for our, both our mental health and our physical health, I know you mentioned that yeah. uh, yoga was a new class that was being offered, but I love that. And I could just see our, our clients and our caregivers, you know, doing those yoga classes and, um, you know, hopping online to, you know, get on that class, especially if it's recorded, you know, that we can have class at any time of the day. Um, and if you wanted to involve your son or your daughter in West Point or Norfolk or Fremont, wherever they live, you know, maybe they could take a class with you right now. How cool is that to um, really connect people? There, there's just so many potentials that we probably weren't tapping as, as quickly as we could. It's funny how we're forced into making changes that we've been, you know, moving along slowly. Now it, it, it pushes us forward a little bit uh, faster and we go, why weren't we doing this earlier? Well, I know you've got some really great offerings and the timing is perfect. Um, I'm so glad that we got to speak with you today. Uh, Andrew and I always look forward to teaching Prepare to Care. We know that there's a lot of people that are caregiving for a loved one or that are planning to care for a loved one. Um, we're also excited for the fall. We have adapted our uh, classes as we do the assisted living memory care tours and the rehabilitation uh, recovery tours and um, education on those classes to be able to continue to present those one way or another. Um, so we'll continue to adapt as instructors and it's, it's an honor to be part of your program. Well, I appreciate that, Carla and Andrew. Thank you for having me. And I appreciate uh, you know, your interest and in, in promotion of OLLI because it is a, a great program and, and we want it to thrive and, and mostly because we want to serve uh, our seniors here in this great city. Yeah, and if anybody, you know, that's watching in, tuning in on today, if you're not familiar with Ollie, um, I enjoy it so much because there's just really interesting uh, attendees and awesome topics. And so mm -hmm. I think it's a great thing to check out, you know, if somebody's sitting at home and they're trying to figure out some activities to do in the summer, great opportunity. I'd recommend it. And if they've got any questions, all they have to do is go to our website. It's ollie.unl.edu. It's a simple website and everything they need to know is right there. Thank you so much, Bob. Have a great day. All right. Thank you. Thanks.